Hi children, this is your physical science facilitator SS from Commander Group of Schools. Welcome to the online classes. Children, in the last class we learned about some chemical properties, very important uh, one about neutralization also. What is neutralization? One mole of acid reacts with one mole of base to produce salt and water. But what is the concept that all salts are not neutral? The strength of the or the nature of the salt is dependent on the strength of the acid or base. Right? And one more chemical property we discuss about the metallic oxide uh, react with acids. Yes, metallic oxide react with acid. In that case also water or salt is formed. So that metallic oxides are basic in nature. Okay, that what we learned in the previous class. Now let us see one more that about uh, non-metallic oxides. Non-metallic oxides. When they react with the bases, then what happens? Anyone can say? We have already learnt this one. Non-metallic oxide. You may take for non-metallic oxide, carbon dioxide. What base? What is the base? Calcium hydroxide. Calcium hydroxide. What is the other thing of calcium hydroxide? Shape line. I think you may remember now. Carbon dioxide is a non-metallic oxide. Carbon is a non-metallic oxide. Non-metallic oxide react with who? Base. Calcium hydroxide. CF one stable base. This is like a line, is a base. So non-metallic oxides react with bases. Then what happened? Yes, already we learned that. It converts into milky white. Calcium. Carbonate and besides this, water means salt water is formed. Salt water. What is neutralization? One mole of acid react with one mole of base to form salt and water. What happened? The metallic oxides react with the acids. Same here also, non metallic oxide react with the bases. In this case, also we are getting yes, salt and water, salt and water. From this what you can consume what? Non-metallic oxide is going to react with bases to produce salt and water. To produce salt and water is a neutralization reaction it is a base. We should give the salt and water where the base will react with acids. So what is the nature of this CO2? Acidic in nature. The nature of Fluorine is acidic. That's non-metallic oxide. From this equation, we can conclude that non-metallic oxides are acidic in nature. And in the last class, metallic oxides are basic in nature. Among them, these two are important. CaO is dash nature and CO2 is dash nature. Is it a non-metallic oxide? It is a metallic oxide. So that it is a metallic or basic in nature, non-metallic acidic in nature. Okay, so how we can identify that one? How we can conclude that? Because this non-metallic oxide reacts with bases to produce salt and water. Similarly, metallic oxide dissolves or uh, react with acids to produce salt and water. So from this we can conclude metallic oxides are basic in nature, non-metallic oxides are acidic in nature. Okay. Right. Then you say any common thing in all the aspects and bases. We have to identify them. Is there any common criteria or common property or common element or common ion is there for the aspects? Of course, on the basis. For that, we have to do what is more accurate. For that, we will see. Initially, we have to take what? Contain like this something about how to take one beaker. 
from media. Easy diagram. So easy diagram and so important diagram. A small diagram is given for four marks. Four marks. Case five is the no. In the academic standard, fifth one. So we have the thirty third question. Thirty third question we have the first half of the paper bigger. And this one bigger will be. We can do that about hundred mm. Its capacity is about hundred mm. Take a beaker whose capacity is about hundred mm. Okay. Brother, I have to check that. Brother, I have to go waste the time. First, you have to take one beaker whose capacity is about hundred mm. Okay. Now, to this, in this, you have to take uh, two. Electrodes. Two electrodes we need. Two electrodes. This is one electrode. Similar linear one for electrode. Two identical electrodes, most we pair up on with graphite. Okay, these two are pair up with graphite electrodes. These two electrodes. I take it two wires, two wires of different colors, of different colors. Like this. And these two wires are connected. Of course, the distribution the tap is not there. Directly plug is there. Directly plug. And this the plug of 230 volts, 230 volts. And Taffy, beside of that, Taffy, we are having a bulb. Taffy at 230 volts of the box. After that, a bulb. Let us guess that it may be a bulb. This is how you pull a man like this. The bundle is that. I'm connected to this. Okay. Now, this is the diagram. So why we need this diagram? To identify the common pigment or the common criteria which is present in the acids and of course the conductivity of different solutions also right for that different solutions means first i have to take one solution in one particular flask about what h2so4 sulfuric acid in second solution the second one i am going to take uh, hcl hydrochloric acid in the third one the third one i am going to take uh, glucose glucose or in the fourth i am going to take uh, alcohol alcohol Oh, here I wrote Thomas. C six H five O six C two H five O H. Okay. So in this activity, with the help of this activity, we have to show many things here. What is the common thing present in acids? And we have to know whether all the solutions, means the different types of solutions, will conduct the electricity or not. Okay. For that. What is the the requirements we need? What beaker? What is the capacity of beaker? Hundred mm. Hundred mm beaker. Two electrodes. What about with graphite? Graphite electrodes or carbon electrodes. And two wires, nothing but conductors. One tap key and one plug socket. And one bulb. So this tap key. 
and plug or potential and the bulb should be connected in series. Series means once you start from uh, one uh, interval to another interval, if all are going to touch, that is going to be considered as series. So these are connected in series. Now, first I would like to take uh, sulfuric acid. Now I am going to take sulfuric acid in it. Sulfuric acid. Put sulfuric acid in this one. Okay? Acid. Sulfuric acid. Now, after taking the sulfuric acid, I am going to close the tap. Just close the tap. Once you close the tap, then what happens? Electricity will pass us through this one. And once it enters into this, once it enters into this, now this electrolyte is about sulfuric acid, no? it will be decomposed as H plus and HSO4 minus. Like this, or maybe 2H plus and SO4 minus. Like this. Okay, so forget about this SO4. What is that? 2H plus. Okay. And these positive ions, first one electrode is negative and one electrode is positive. These positive, we will apply it with the into one unit. So, these positive ions, H plus ions, will come, come over here, which supports, which supports or promote the electricity. So, that what happened? H plus ions are there. Here, SO4 minus ions are there. Here, plus ions. And here minus the into ions are so these positive ions and negative ions will promote the electricity because for the propagation of electricity we need a positive tender and negative tender. So positive and negative are attained when sulfuric acid is dissolved in this one aqueous solution. Already we prepared the solution now, it's so a prepared solution. When electricity is passes, then this ions will form. This positive ions, high H plus ions. Hydrogen ions are going to promote. So that what happened? The electricity will pass like this. So that immediately the bulb will glow. The bulb will glow. The bulb is glowing means it conducts the electricity. So sulfuric acid is conducting the electricity. Now remove this sulfuric acid. Remove the sulfuric acid and take another acid. Take HCl acid. Hydrochloric acid. Again, add it to this one. Now, what is there? Instead of sulfuric acid, we are having hydrochloric acid. It will decompose as H plus and Cl minus. Same phenomena. H plus ions will come over here. Cl minus ions will go there. Positive ions, negative ions. Again, electricity will pass after closing this one. So, once you close this one, then electricity will pass. Again the bulb will glow. So for this what you noticed? HCl as well as sulfuric acid. Both are ready to give H plus ions. H plus ions. So from this it is clear that uh, for example you take nitric acid HNO3. HNO3. Then also H plus or HNO3 minus. So in all these acids, what is common? H plus ions are common. So, most of the acids, of course, uh, acids. So, these acids are going to produce H plus ions. These H plus ions is the common criteria in the acids, which promote the electricity. So, with the help of this, uh, this small activity, we can conclude that acids are having one common ion, that is about H plus ion, H plus ion. But don't forget, there is no independent existence of H plus ions in aqueous solutions. In water, in water, the H plus ions does not exist individually. Okay, means uh, bare ions. We call it the bare ions. H plus ions should not be bare in the aqueous solution, nothing but water. So immediately, what happened? It will combine with water and form. H3O plus ions, hydronium ions. Okay, don't forget important for half mark. There is no independent existence of H plus ions in aqueous solution. In water, there is no 
H plus I ask individually, they won't exist individually. What happened? They will combine with the water molecules and form hydronium ions. Hydronium ions. So, generally we are going to say that H plus is the common thing that is going to present in acids. Now, if I am going to do the same activity by changing the solution. First, sulfuric acid, electricity passes and the bulb is glowed. HCl, electricity passes and bulb glows. Why? Because the unit H plus ions. Now I am going to take glucose. I will take glucose. Now the solution has changed here. The solution is changed. It's not acid now. It's not acid. I am going to take glucose solution. Glucose solution. It's about glucose solution. When I am going to take the glucose solution, after taking the glucose solution, I would like to close the tap. And I am going to observe whether the bulb is glowing or not. But I observe that the bulb is not glowing. The bulb is not glowing. Why the bulb is not glowing? Because there is no propagation of electricity. If electricity has to pass through this conductors, suddenly the negative or positive ions are needed. But glucose, glucose dissolves, C6, H12, O6, will dissolve, so the glucose molecules itself, not ions. In previous HCl, H plus Cl minus, sulfuric acid, 2H plus and SO4 minus. Ions are going to be formed in the case of acids, but in the case of glucose solution, there is no ions, so that there is no propagation of electricity, so that the bulb is not Blowing. Okay, in case of glucose, it's not going to blow. Now, take another one. What is that? Alcohol. Now, I am going to take alcohol C2H5OH in this. Again, close the tap tube and observe whether the bulb is glowing or not. No, the bulb is not glowing. Why? Because ethanol, ethanol, nothing but ethyl alcohol. See here, OH is there now. Carbon dioxide is there what we call hydroxide, but with metal. When it is with metal, we have to consider as hydroxide. When it is with the law, carbon alcohol, ethyl alcohol, sodium hydroxide. Here also OH, here also OH. Along with metal, base hydroxide. Along with carbon alcohol. Right. Now, in this case, if you take the solution of Ethanol. In the case of ethanol solution also, the bulb is not glowing because no ions are going to be formed. Clear? But don't forget about this diagram. Okay. So, what are the parts? Bulb, tap key, conductors, beaker, what you call these two? Electrodes. And what are the solution? Based on the solution, you have to If you take a you will write a if you take ethanol, you will write ethanol. Okay, four marks important diagram. 33rd question, AS5. Based on AS5, the questions are coming. Already previous question also, very easy diagram. From these two things, we learn that glucose and ethanol solutions does not promote the electricity. And HCl, H2SO4 promote the electricity because they are releasing H plus ions. Here, no ions. What is the common criteria in the acids? H plus ion. But what is the concept? The H plus ions. They are not bare ions in aqueous solutions. Immediately the H plus ions react with who? Water and form hydronium ions. And think uh, one thing, I will give one homework to you. If I am going to take the NaOH, I am going to take NaOH here. Then what happened? Think tomorrow we will discuss that one. Okay, now today we learn that one and tomorrow's homework is what happened when India OH is taken in this video. Okay, try to answer. Tomorrow we will discuss that. Now, now we will see one more thing that is whether all these acids will produce H plus ions only in aqueous solutions 
All you need are the solution. That you have to understand now. Okay, for that we will see. First take one. Test tube or with the boiling tube like this. Take a boiling tube. Like this. In this boiling tube, first take some sodium chloride. Sodium chloride. Sodium chloride. You have to take. And add some. Have to add some. Like this. In the help of a test tube, add some. H2SO4 sulfuric acid to this salt. Why we are doing this? To know whether all the acids will give H plus ions in different solutions also. Only the aqueous solution or in different solutions also that are going to produce H plus ions or not. That is the problem bacteria. For that part, we have to take 1 gram of sodium chloride. What of 1 gram? 1 gram of sodium chloride means table salt sodium chloride and we took uh, some amount of H2SO4 sulfuric acid ok so this color sulfuric acid first taken here and the sulfuric acid is mixed into NaCl then what happened reaction takes place between these two H2SO4 react with NaCl. Now this sodium react with the sulfide and hydrogen react with this chlorine. So that the reaction takes place first hydrogen chlorine. So HCl gas is evolved. And what is this? NaSO4 is there. What is the valence of SO4? 2 sodium valence is 1. So simply write Na2. SO4. So two sodiums keep to here now. Two chlorines keep to here. So two heads. The equation is balanced. See, first take a boiling tube. In this boiling tube, about a gram of sodium chloride and take few ml of sulfuric acid. Add the sulfuric acid to this one. Okay, once you add this one, sulfuric acid to this boiling tube. Then the reaction takes place and one gas is evolved. One gas is evolved. What is the gas evolved here? Hydrogen chloride. Hydrogen chloride. Gas is evolved. Okay, how many HCl is called hydrochloric acid? How many HCl is called hydrochloric acid? What is the property of acids? Acids will change the blue litmus into Red litmus. They will change the blue litmus paper into red litmus. Okay? So blue litmus should change it into red. Of course, we are writing because the presence will be there. Okay, right. HC, hydrochloric acid, should convert the blue litmus into red litmus. But here, HCl gas is evolved. The gas HCl is evolved. When you introduce the blue litmus paper here, you will take a blue litmus paper. Like this blue litmus paper. When you keep on the surface of the HCl, hydrogen chloride, it doesn't change. It doesn't change. Means HCl, which is evolved, which is evolved between the reactions of sulfuric acid and the NaCl, HCl gas is evolved, but it doesn't change the blue litmus paper into red litmus. Means it doesn't have the acidic nature. It is not having the acidic nature. Why it is not having an acidic nature? Because there is no free H plus ions. If you want to identify whether it's changes or not, do one thing. Take this blue litmus, take this blue litmus and pour some water on the surface of it and keep on the surface of this gas. Then it will change this nothing but moisture litmus paper. If you take the moisture litmus paper, then water will be there, no? Moisture means water. In the presence of water, means aqueous solution. In the presence of aqueous solution, it will change. Means, in the second case, what we are taking the same. Take the 
volume tube. In this volume tube, take one gram of sodium chloride, sodium chloride, and add sulfuric acid, fuel of sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid, H2SO4. Okay, H2SO4. Now, the reaction takes place between these two NaCl and H2SO4. Reaction takes place and on gases around what is the gas? HCl gas, hydrogen chloride gas is a wall. On the surface of this test tube, this where the gas is a wall, there I am going to introduce one moisture, moisture, moisture litmus paper. Moisture litmus paper is what should be there? Water. Now, it converts, this converts into red. It converts into red in color. The blue litmus changes into red litmus. Why? Because what is there? Moisture is there. In the presence of aqueous, in the presence of aqueous solutions, the acids will release H plus ions. Here, it's not going to happen, but it is going to be here. It's going to happen because here H plus ions are available because aqueous solution is there. Here, no aqueous solution, no aqueous solution. So that. The HCl doesn't act as an acid. So HCl hydrogen chloride gas, hydrogen chloride gas is not act as an acid in the absence of aqueous solution. It will act as an acid in the presence of aqueous solutions. Okay, that's about the small activity to test about the acid. Here the questions may be given based on this. Why is the HCl? Of course, they give it uh, like this. There is a gas X There is a gas X released where NaCl react with sulfuric acid. And this X does not change the color of blue litmus paper. What is X? Identified. Or otherwise, they will ask like this. When H2SO4 react with NaCl, one gas is evolved which changes the moisture blue litmus into red. Like that. Okay, so identify X. Or they will give like this comparisons. Here, dry litmus paper. Dry litmus paper does not change. Moisture litmus paper change. What is the scenario you observe? What is the reason behind that? Like that the questions may be asked, most two more questions. Have understood? HCl as a gas, it doesn't change the dry blue litmus paper into red. Means it is not an acid in the case of dry. Why it is the aqueous solution? This is the presence of moisture, it changes. So H plus ions are essentially present in acids, which converts the blue litmus into red litmus. Okay. So, like this, you may take different acids and salts, and we have taken the test whether the, they are having H plus ions or not, all the things. Okay. Have a good day. Thank you.